following is going to talk about what is computer-based training and kind of all the steps you need to you know go through to make sure you're ready to develop and talk about the development process a little bit kind of what you need so first of all to start what is computer-based training computer-based training is any kind of training that you're going to take on the computer usually without an instructor or a facilitator something that you take on the computer it can be on the web um, it can be a standalone program that you might click a link or you know open up from a cloud or a, something like that it can also be mobile based training too as well um, it can be something that you take on a tablet a mobile phone but it's something that you're taking usually without your instructor there it's self-paced um, can sometimes and usually is linked to a learning management system um, that's done to help track that, hey, you've actually taken this and can, if you're taking some kind of assessment to get certified or to show you, you know the information that you're done. So it's usually linked to some kind of LMS. That's usually what's powering it or running it. So before you start developing programming, computer-based training, you don't just sit down and start to develop it. So you have to kind of plan it out. So what are the steps? Um, and I'm just telling, giving those of you who are new to this, you know, what are those steps so you ensure you have this information before you start. Know your problem, know your solution. You've done some kind of front end analysis, gap analysis. Know your learners, know their environment. All right, so after we know that, we know what our goal is. We should have a goal. What are the goals of this? And we know how it's going to be designed and developed. Um, we know our tasks, so we've organized all the content, written objectives for all the content, created assessment items for all those objectives, so you know, so we can make sure that the learners actually um, know what we're trying to teach them. Then we start to actually design it. What does design mean? It means we start to organize what this is going to really, you know, what what this con how we're going to organize the content. So we look at our instructional strategies, which are our, our organizational strategies and delivery strategies. Our organizational strategies, for example, Gagne's nine events. Something that we're saying this is the intro, this is the body, this is the conclusion. You know, Gagne's nine events organizes this in a great way. Um, and then we have our delivery strategies, which is like, okay, so we know how we're going to organize the content, but what, how are we going to present it to them? Like, are they going to be solving problems? Is it going to be like a problem-based learning? Or are we going to do a number of things, like have chunking in some sections? Are we going to have um, some mnemonic devices? What are we going to do? How are we going to really deliver this content? What kind of content is it? Factual, problem-solving? What are they going to be remembering? And we'll present each of those kinds of content in different ways so the learners can really grasp it and memorize it all right so assuming we've done all of those things ready to actually start developing to an extent so first step we have to know our system and our technology so like what kind of technology are we developing this in where is it going to be housed what's the system is it going to be a learning management system is it going to be on a web server what is really you know where are we putting this um, then we have to know if there's any like big issues like compliance issues like does this need to be ADA compliant you know um, does this need to be SCORM compliant because we have to know what though you know if we're developing for some for that while we're developing so we know that we develop it correctly so we don't have to go back and do rework all right so then we usually start I like to start with my paper prototypes that's where I'm you know trying to figure out what the template what's the look gonna look like right draw it on paper once I'm done with my paper prototypes I get that approved by the client so once I'm done with my paper prototype I'm ready to start storyboarding once I start storyboarding I'm gonna storyboard out every single piece of the computer-based instruction why I want to get that approved by whoever their subject matter experts are to say yes this is 100% ready to go and then I'm ready to develop now I might be developing a programmer might be developing another instructional designer might be developing but they're ready to go they're ready to develop it um, but we might need to work with them or if it's just me doing it which it's usually I'm trying to you know do everything a lot of times or if I'm on a team I'll be working with them we talk about what are our development strategies and we might create something like a style guide. We might have our media developed along while I'm doing storyboards and stuff like that. All right, so 
our our development strategies are our multimedia principles. What are we going to use? And these things like usability issues. So multimedia principles, like am I going to use images and text? Am I going to use images and narration? And all this is taken into consideration with my users. You know, usability issues, consider things like Fitz Law. How big do I want my buttons to be? What colors am I going to use? Things like that. Um, and usually while I'm coming up with those development strategies, I'm also developing a style guide, which helps me to, you know, say what the fonts are going to be and all the things that are involved in style. Um, and then what I'm also doing is my, someone might be doing it or I might be doing, I'm starting to plan out my media. So are my graphics developed? Like what are my buttons going to look like? I start to build all my buttons to make sure they're consistent. They look alike. Um, I'm developing any sounds that I'm using or narration. Like do I have a script? Is the script going to be read? Who's going to read it? Do I have a professional narrator? Um, and I start to go through that and start to get, because that has to be developed before I can really start developing, because I'm going to have to put that script in there and that narration in there, especially for the things like timing. Video, same thing. Am I having a production company, a, um, a professional video person? Or are we using like the cheap old iPhone, you know, to develop video for this? Uh, but we go through and have to start to think of that kind of stuff as we're getting ready and doing development. Usually this is all kind of taking place while I'm doing storyboarding, um, maybe a little after, but it's all around the same time. All right, so I'm starting to actually develop now. I'm using whatever software I'm going to use, you know, Articulate, Camtasia, maybe just the web, um, whatever I'm building this in, it's getting ready, you know, um, I'm developing it. But... I can't just be, you know, say, hey, I'm done. Here you go, client. Like, here's your stuff. No, I got to do a few more things. So we got to test it. I and mean, I test it in multiple ways. I got to test. I got to let users test it. I usually let users test it. I usually start with a few one-to-one -one users where I can observe them um, and make sure that, you know, everything's working out smoothly. This is what I call my alpha testing. Um, alpha testing is when I'm looking for big problems, like big issues, like it's not really close to being done. It's like at that 50%. I'm looking for big issues. Um, so I usually will start out with like some one-to-one -one observation kind of things to make sure where everything's working correctly on like users' computers, especially if I'm using like some of my users have Macs, some have Android, Apple, like all the different stuff. So I then I start to test that system. Like how does the, is the system working? Like can I put this on a sandbox or play or like an L, the LMS that I'm going to host this and is it going to work? I start to, and I want to stress their system and make sure it's really going to work, not break. Like I'll go through and with my program and I'll push the back button like a hundred times and see if I can break my piece of software that I just developed. And then I'll ask my one-to-one -one users to do that. I'm in this alpha testing phase where I'm looking for big problems, big issues. All right, once I'm past that, I go to my beta phase. My beta phase is where I've done all that kind of stress testing. I know everything's working. I'm looking for small little things that I might have missed. Like on one of the screens, did I miss, miss putting like the, the sound button or whatever it is? Or did I miss like, did I not put the, the, the script for someone who doesn't want to hear it or whatever it is? Did I miss things like that? That's where I start doing some small group. Once I'm done with that small group, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start to do some, maybe a larger group if possible, but I'm really like working out all the fine issues here. And that's where I really am. I'm, I'm, you know, at that point, we're pretty much ready to roll out. So, you know, our computer-based instruction is done. Our clients seen it. Our, we've tested it. Our SMEs have all given it that final sign-off. And you're ready to hand the project off to a client. Now, however implementation's going, you may or may not be involved. That can be a huge process in of itself. Um, but for this, you know, what I'm talking about right now is just really getting that computer-based training done. Thank you. Thank you.